Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about a really cool tool called the Proportional Editing Tool. Now, proportional editing is just a way of transforming selected elements, such as vertices, edges, faces, or even objects themselves, and then having that transformation also apply to other objects, vertices, faces, or edges in the sphere of influence to a smaller degree. So generally this is something that you would use in uh, edit mode in the modeling workspace, but if I bring in some extra cubes here and say just want to scale this one up, if I turn proportional editing on, I can scale this one and then it will also affect these other three. So let's do that. To turn proportional editing on, all you have to do is go up to the top here and click this little button. And when you do that, you'll have proportional editing turned on. You can also hit it shortcut, which is O, and toggle between proportional editing and non-proportional editing. So uh, in non-proportional editing, I can scale this up, and it's just going to scale like normal and only affect these. But if I toggle on proportional editing and I scale this up on the z-axis, you'll notice that there's a white outline sphere of influence here. And when I scale this cube, you can see that while I'm scaling the one I have selected the most, it's also applying scales to the other objects inside the sphere of influence. All right, so let's take a minute, and uh, while you can see that this works, let's go into a little bit more detail on how it works and why it works by uh, taking a look at how you would use it in edit mode. And to do that, I'm just gonna add in a plane, switch to our modeling workspace, and subdivide the crap out of this thing so that we can see it best. All right, so when you start working with dense geometry like we have here, it can become a little annoying to try to move and make these vertices have some subtle adjustments to them without them getting this kind of weird little pinching shape or even coming up with some weird face mapping. So to enable the smoothest possible transformation, we can turn on proportional editing there. And we'll just turn it on. We'll click the drop down, hit enable. And then I'll move this again. And you can see right now that it's moving the entire uh, thing that we have selected. The reason it's doing that is because our sphere of influence is ridiculously large. So if I zoom out, you can see the entirety of our sphere of influence. And for that, that's far too big for what we're trying to manipulate. So we can actually change the sphere of influence by scrolling down or scrolling up, and that will directly affect how we move the faces, edges, vertices, or other objects that we have inside our sphere of influence. Okay, so if we come down here and I try to move that object and I decrease the sphere of influence, you can start to see that it's really just moving that one and then there's a pretty decent fall off there. And you can't really tell that well. But let's go ahead and grab this one face in the middle. And just move this up along the z-axis. And what you can see is that there's this kind of nice fall off with how that plays out. Well, the reason for that is that not only do we have our sphere of influence, we also have a proportional editing fall off thing that allows us to change how things fall off or how strong the effect of the proportional editing is as you move away from the center of our sphere of influence. So by default, we have the smooth fall off where we get this nice smooth kind of transition. But if we undo that and we switch to the sphere, you can see it's much more spherical in how it moves the geometry. We could do a root fall off where when we pull that up a little higher, it's, you know, it's kind of like a, a halfway point between the smooth and the sphere. Then we have the inverse square, which is going to be a little bit uh, closer to the smooth than our root was, but it's still pretty much doing that same um, pointed dome. We have the sharp fall off, which is a very, very sharp fall off um, as opposed to smooth. It's just kind of moving this one face up. And as we increase that, it's going to give us, um, you know, a, a more area. But by default, it's just going to be super sharp. Then we have a linear fall off. 
and this will move it much more like a straight line down. And actually, if we were to look at that from the right, you can see this is a straight line. And from the front, we have a straight line as well. So from all of our angles, it's just giving us a linear fall off from the center of our sphere of influence. We then have a constant fall off, and this will allow us to move this all up. And everything inside of our sphere of influence is going to be moved up at the same height and distance and everything outside of that sphere of influence will not be moved at all. That's kind of fun uh, to play around with, but you can see that. And then we have a random fall off, which just says, hey, we're going to pull this up and uh, I want you to randomly move other vertices, edges, and faces around in there. And I could, I could see how that would be really fun if you were trying to make a more realistic terrain object or what have you. Um, but this has very limited and specific uses. So generally, I think you would use the smooth fall off or maybe one of the other ones. And I think the further you go down, the less likely you are to use that fall off. But now we've talked about it. And I can tell you from experience that the proportional editing tool, if you're not sculpting anything uh, and you're just trying to do all of the modeling yourself, is an invaluable tool for the 3D artist. All right, before we go, there's one last thing I want to talk about, and it's the different methods of proportional editing. So we already know that we can toggle, disable, and enable by simply hitting the O key or coming up here and turning it on or off. But there are two other options for proportional editing, and let's talk about them. So first, projected 2D. Well, projected 2D will actually allow you to move uh, elements without worrying about depth of view. All right, so if we were to look at this from the right orthographic view, and I were to move this up, because we have projected 2D on, it doesn't care about the depth of field. And so it's just gone ahead and said, hey, I'm just gonna move all of these faces up uh, along the Z and then do that fall off regardless of where it is uh, from this face, we're just going based on the view. The downside of this is if you're not doing an orthographic view, um, it does play a little bit, uh, a little bit weirdly. So if you're going to use the projected 2D, make sure you're in an orthographic view to get those best results. And then we have the connected proportional editing option. Now the connected proportional editing option allows you to move faces um, only that are that are connected, so elements that are only connected together. Now the connected proportional editing mode only allows you to uh, manipulate things that are connected. So for example, if I were to delete this row of faces here, and I have the normal one turned on, if I were to then grab this face and move it up, you can see that not only is what I have selected moving up, but also everything inside the sphere of influence. If we turn it on to connected only, and I move it up, only the objects that are connected to what we currently have selected will be moved. And this is really important and kind of cool because let's say you're working on a character's fingers and you want to manipulate one character's fingers or vertices on one finger without affecting anything else. You can actually like deconnect them and then just play around with the ones on that particular finger without worrying about changing any of the other vertices around any other finger. So that's a really cool thing. And that brings us to the end of our proportional editing video. All right, y'all, if you've made it to this point in the video, I'll tell you that you liked it, and that's awesome. If you wouldn't mind, though, hit that like button to let me know that I did a good job with this. And if you want to keep learning Blender with us, hit the subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we drop a new video. Thanks for watching. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I will see you in the next video.